открываю. I open the 106th day of Ukraine's resistance. This is Media Center Ukraine. We're starting next briefing. With us are Rostislav Chistuk, coordinator of the support center of the 20, 125th Brigade of Territorial Defense of the Ukraine Armed Forces of Ukraine, and as well as uh, National Deputy of Ukraine, and Oleksandr Khorshun, head of the material support service of the same territorial brigade, Territorial Defense Brigade. Uh, gentlemen, please uh, join me at the podium. And the first question is, um, what do you have to tell us? Hello, Slava Ukraini. Uh, we true, thank you for this opportunity uh, to, to give us this for giving us the platform uh, to if we're gonna give us this opportunity to tell you more about our support center for the 125th Brigade and uh, tell you a little bit about how it started. Basically, work is ongoing, and maybe just a few numbers give you just a few numbers of what we are and what we do. Uh, and what sort of results we've uh, already some of some of our accomplishments i'll start by saying that uh, i'd like to stress that our our support center is based on the uh 100 125 Char charity foundation it's a union of volunteers working with the same goal to consolidate their efforts to support our uh, our compatriots uh with for for our victory we we're officially st started on april 4th uh, 2022 and we, we have some accomplishments to share over these past few months in order to s strengthen the support of our state we started forming territorial defense departments in ukraine um the new 125th separate brigade uh, of the armed forces of ukraine is responsible for the defense of Lviv. it was formed basically during uh, already during combat and of course this raise the need to quickly uh, provide material support for the battalions uh, the main goal of the brigade is to supply the this brigade to support the um, defense of our state we understand that all of the efforts of the uh, ministry of defense are aimed at supporting the detachments that find themselves in the front line and in the combat zone and in order to support our reserves and our security we have to consolidate our efforts to support uh, uh, these detachments uh, that are responsible for the d defense of important objects both in Lviv and in Ukraine. The support center for 125 uh, is uh, the so-called um, reliable rear, a solid rear for our defenders. Our team, uh, may I, yeah I'll just continue here, um, Sorry, just a second. Right. So our team um, comprises 10 volunteers who communicate daily with our boys and girls uh, the, uh, and try to support them in everything they need. We, I would like to briefly say, uh, say that we are also supported by some of the local businesses and some of our here are some of our partners with, with, with whom we have signed memoranda and with whom we have joined uh, with whom we jointly pay attention in order to consolidate um, the acquisitions of important things uh, ammo medications etc together with software the uh, motions Kudis, uh, Lviv Holo, Rotary Club and other local businesses Ashan, Blazenko, Naftohas and even the uh, Ministry for uh, Digital Transformation. I'd also like to stress that our center, uh, how, how it works, um, it's we communicate with the battalions, with the command, with the head of the uh, material uh, uh, direction, and with the uh, commander uh, Artur Hrubenko of the uh, commander of the brigade, we set priorities and we do our best together with our partners, uh, whom I've already mentioned, to um, do our best to help our uh, service men and women. So, uh, so from from the most we we set a roadmap starting with the hardest objectives and going to the easiest and takes up to takes about a week up to a week 
to provide the needed uh, things. We, of course, uh, lead accounts. We give all this to the battalions. Our principle is uh, transparency. We, 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 we provide uh, our support directly. Next slide, please. So it's um, and a few words, perhaps, about how our basic principles of work is that uh, is full transparency. We publish. Uh, our, our Facebook page and our page of social media and our Instagram page, uh, we publicize and report uh, all of our work. We're very grateful to our partners who support us and the volunteers who care. We always um, report about all the funds that we've collected, um, that they're used they're used according to the goals set in the fundraising and uh, every month we publish a report uh, with the res outlining the results of our work uh, more about this report uh, this is uh, our april report in the first month of our work we managed to together with our partners we managed to attract about 6.3 million hryvna altogether um, this translated into um, helmets, uh, heat visors, uh, clothes, uh, medications, even technology. And thanks to our supporters, we've uh, we're, we've supplied them with with a car. In 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 May, we we actually managed a little more. We uh, of up to seven million hryvna. And so, as you as you can see, we're working and we'll continue working. So, I would also just. Can I just have another picture? This, yeah, this is where um, this is a kind of a, a detailed infographic of what we've managed to attract in these past two months. The numbers speak for themselves. Um, we have the necessary things such as uh, bulletproof vests, uh, medical kind of collections, uh, uh, helmets, necessary medications, uh, vitamins. Uh, we even have the so-called uh, mini ambulance uh, point. It's a small bag, um, one meter by 60 centimeters, and it's necessary in field conditions to uh, provide uh, first aid, uh, in, including for you know, with, with, with taking out bullets or or fragments to uh, give. Quick, quick, quick operation if necessary, f and continue. We have sleeping uh, sets of sleeping bags. By the way, the v Veneto has um, given us a unique opportunity to uh, buy these um, sleeping sleeping sets uh, almost at the at at the at the rate which it took them to manufacture them. Uh, to provide comfortable sleep for our service men and service women, and to conclude, uh, how you can find us? Um, th these are some of our uh, social, our presence on the social media, uh, Center for the Support of the 125th Brigade, uh, and as well the Charitable Foundation 125. Uh, on these pages, we fundraise, and together with we we've managed to support people with uh, with bulletproof vests. So please uh, follow follow our uh, social media pages and please uh, join our efforts. Oh, sorry, just I will leave you with our QR code. It's a very quick. This this way you can quickly um, see our. Yes, I can open the, the 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 floor to questions if we have any. If we aren't, then maybe I have a quick question to Alexander. What would you say is the level of um, provision? What, what what percent of needs are satisfied? Could you give us more details about that? Um, thanks to the armed forces supply and various um, organizations and the 125 Charitable Fund and other sources, we have a reasonably high uh, percent uh, of uh, supply of of all, of all that are brigade needs and the 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 detachments that are working in the combat zone are actually 100 percent uh, provided here we provide um complete uh, provisions and we're close to full uh 
full uh, supply. There are some uh, gaps and uh, which which the charity fund helps us uh, close um, in reasonable timely fashion. Um, so I'm very grateful to those who uh, support our efforts. Uh, the war is ongoing and um, many things are constantly needed. So um, we do our best to provide the, um, the to prioritize and uh, provide uh, the, the needed things as particularly particularly to the detachments that are working in the combat area. So maybe maybe then a question to both of you: um, How ought you to volunteer best, or how how ought you to support? Let me explain. Many people want to help. Many people want to get involved. But it's not at all clear that they're doing it right. And so they buy cheap bulletproof vests, but they're no good. They buy cheap tourniquets that immediately break. What would you suggest to people who want to help, who want to get involved? How is, how is it best? How is it best to help? How is it supposed to work? What's the best way? This is a very good question, actually. I kept asking myself that at first. You know, how, how do you volunteer? How do you do it right? Because, you know, because you're not buying this for yourself. You're buying this for our defenders, for our heroes, and it's their morale, their morale, their um, the fact that they have what they need in terms of ammo. It requires a lot of attention. So it's important to maybe talk to the specific person and what they need specifically. That they, they they tell you their specific needs. So, so it's not just to say, we have nothing, give us everything you can. No, that's not right. What's right is when a specific uh, serviceman or servicewoman says, I need a heat visor of this kind, night, night goggles. What kind do you need? He said, no, what kind can you buy? He said, no, I'm sorry, we can't work like that. Let us talk to your command uh, or with your, with your battery or with your battalion or, or even brigade specifically. There are specifically people who know what you need, who knows specifically, they write us the specific the specs for what you need, and then we can look into this. The next thing we do is I look for the best price, we present an invoice, and then we have the money wired uh, transparently. We try, we try to buy this. It's very important that this procedure is agreed with who this is need necessary for and with their specific uh, detachment or battery or so because you have all these all these buyers oh we're abroad we can buy this we can buy that and a lot of things many things like that but the question is let's say you have a standard situation so let's let's say you buy a, 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 a vision goggles right where, where is it going well it's, it's not going to work with our weapons right nato weapons are different from our weapons so yeah, there are these there are these aspects. So it's very important to talk to the specific person um, because it, it, then you we can also buy, let's say, a, 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 a vest that that weighs twelve, thir thirteen kilos, and it's simply uh, simply a burden. You know, it's untested; it hasn't been fired at. There's no; it doesn't have a certificate and other necessary documents that would uh, be confirmed by the lab saying that this has been tested and it's ready to serve uh, a, a, or perform its function as needed. So it's very important to, um, to start with a specific person, to state their specific needs, specific material needs, and then you can continue. But I also like to stress that please test, please verify who you're buying this through, because uh, there's all kinds of people there's all kinds of things. People disappear. People drop off the face of the, 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 the earth. It's very important to, to work as close to the buyer as you can. Uh, qu question? Yes, please. Uh, hello, I'd like to ask you, this has to do more with my own experience. Because I'm from Kharkiv. I have a relative, I'm not giving any names, but who, who was in the Kharkiv Territorial Defense uh, Unit and they participated in pretty heavy fighting for the border, uh, the Bilhorod the order. And there were many problems because until, until the president uh, paid attention, everything 
was pretty bad you know yeah there were there were no vests from um, from america because the fear was that they would be stolen if something was stolen there would be people from chicago from people from kharkiv who were in chicago who were sending things to their friends etc but then everything changed people started uh, the acquisition started and i remember we had this question from from your experience from the lviv experience why do you not ask uh, the, 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 the head of the brigade, when I say, help us this, and I say, well, why can't the command provide this? And I say, well, look, we have a war, right? We're in the total war, and we cannot provide everything for us. But now we're in the fourth, mo fourth month, and then when you see an officer who is armed worse than an ordinary uh, soldier, there are sometimes aspects where you don't know, should you volunteer, should you... Uh, call the command should you call officers that they start deciding resolving these questions and so what's the question so what what is the best step to do how do you make yourself more more useful rather than create more problems i guess that is the that is the purely human question how do you thank you i think that in this sense you have to you have to talk to the um the administration, the, the command. In our brigade, all of our um, demands, all of our requirements are first presented to our supply bodies. And we discuss them with those bodies, with, the, with those organizations. And then when, when, let's say, we have a situation that they say, well, look, you're in line, but you're not number one priority right now. And we have, we have paperwork that says that. And then we can say, then we can try to uh, resolve these questions. With the, you know, the first priority things we try to turn to volunteers or funds or other sources. And another thing I'd like to say is that um, you know everything that you everything the volunteers provide to the uh, organizations it has to be also supplied to the command or to their leadership the reason so reason being that this needs to be proportionally uh, distributed to where it's most needed because often what what happens is that uh, you know you, people send things to people they know well first of all the the command doesn't have a full picture about the level of uh, uh, supply that they have and then you have these kinds of nuances where's where's this is if this is following a chain of supply then you have a clear information you know everything can be everything can be uh, uh, taken in and, and and provided to the servicemen and women and then you have the full picture you understand the need you understand the level of supply mm -hmm. okay and then maybe let me also specify that the high number of mobilizations and high number of volunteers have greatly uh, um, increased our, our numbers of our number of forces who have revealed where things work and where there are gaps. So could you tell us what specifically should we should volunteers pay attention to so that they do not buy uh, things that are already in good supply or should so that they maybe cover gaps instead? What are the main um, needs, main uh, demands of our army, of our military? So just briefly, to, 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 sorry, just to add to the previous question uh, a little bit. Look, it's your moral uh, obligation. If you feel a need of this, and you are, you, and you are, and you feel that you can, then you should, because what you're doing is is normal. What what are what are people doing? The servicemen and servicewomen are doing is heroics every day, and so when you're trying to put yourself in their place, which you can't, of course, but the if you even try to imagine that, you understand the level of heroism, the level of service, and you want to support, which is why I encourage everyone to be involved. If you feel a sense that something is needed, please go ahead and do it. It's not a question of, of, of uh, yes, of course, it's a good deed and it will come back to you, but it's not, it's not just that. It, it, it's, it's contributing to our common victory for Ukraine. And to answer your question, um, what are the, the necessary things? I would like to stress that um, everything is needed, um, both like uh, 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 um, 
you know, poly from polythene bags, uh, and you know, many, many, many volunteers brought uh, a lot of these bags. Or a sapper shov shovel, um, because we know um, we we know many instances where the sniper would not crack shot sniper would have no. Uh, where the defenses would would crumble and 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 this is, which would open expose our servicemen and service women to snipers. So we understand that even little things are necessary, up to big things like helmets. Uh, they're very hard to get, not not just for us, but also for uh, when we coordinate for the Ministry of Defense. It's difficult for everyone in Ukraine. There, we have a catastrophic shortage in the world, not just for Ukraine, because our military um, amounts close to 800,000 people under arms. And of course, uh, you, you need to cover every head, right? Uh, and of course, you know, God forbid this can be also uh, the kind of material where, let's say there's a bullet or there's a sh uh, sh shrapnel, of course, you know, helmets are not eternal. They, so they need to be resupplied, they need to be renewed, they need, so, so they're always needed. Um, Heat, heat vision goggles, night vision goggles, and sights, um, and some specific things that people are specific people are asking. So those are always necessary. Thank you, thank you very much. If there are no further questions, we will wrap up. Uh, with us were Rostislav Chistik, coordinator of the, of the Center for the Support of the 125th uh, Territorial Defense Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, and National Deputy of Ukraine, and Alexander Khoroshun. Uh, head of the material service of the same brigade. Our next briefing will be at 12.30. With us will be an unusual person, uh, a vet veteran of the uh, U.S. Armed Forces and a Paralympian, Joseph Whitkey, um, who... <laughs>